here or I forgot to do it for this class or whatever let me make it and Briantra is still trying to get connected to audio so I'm going to let her try to get connected a little bit longer she's been in the class for a while but I don't think she's been able to hear anything yet um, well maybe she can go back and listen to the recording um, I assume you've heard read understand what's going on the college evidently enrollment is down for spring pretty low uh, so I think the administration is sort of panicking now I think part of the deal I, I, my personal feeling falls in somebody's in their lap because I remember last summer when we were registering for fall I mean there were messages going out there about the virtual advising center get out there you know be sure you sign up you know this like this and I was um, teaching last summer and but I had it seems like seven or eight hours maybe not quite that many six seven eight something like that hours of virtual advising you know during the week when I wasn't in class and it seemed like just about not everyone but just about every half hour time slot that I had I had people signed up for I mean just it felt like almost all summer long okay this term I haven't seen very much at all said about virtual advising I didn't know if they had changed their tactics I didn't know what but anyway <laughs> basically I've had zero people uh, sign up for virtual advising this whole term uh, I have advised students who have either contacted me my email or by phone or something like this I've done a fair amount of advising but nothing has been coming through the virtual advising now I thought maybe it's because I'm retiring and they've redirected students to people who will be here in the spring but that's unusual for that to happen but anyway enrollment is very low for a spring so what they're doing is having on campus advising next week Monday through Thursday 9 in the morning until something like 7 in the evening okay now I can't go my health situation precludes that they don't want me there uh, because uh, you know my health situation is really tenuous uh, but there will be people at the tables on the Birmingham campus it'll be on the in that new academic success center on the Bessemer campus it will be over in the Ethel Hall auditorium and there's going to be large spacings you know, um, safety everything's going to be in place of course everybody has to wear a mask um, and wear it properly and wear a good mask you know all that kind of stuff um, but to avoid the crowds try to register today try to register tomorrow you know try to do it if you uh, need advising sign up for the virtual advising center it's out there I know it's out there even though I haven't gotten anyone contacting me this this whole term basically uh, it's there and and get it done then so you don't have to fight with the crowd be exposed that kind of stuff so but if you need to go to campus next week Monday through Thursday 9 to um, 7 in the evening and there's uh, someone going to be available either in the Academic Success Center or the Ethel Hall Auditorium. Now that's the Ethel Hall on the Bessemer campus, not Ethel Hall on the nursing on the East campus. Okay, Biranchi, I see you just got in. <laughs> Congratulations. It took a while, didn't it? Okay. I saw a couple of other lights pop up, Terrell and maybe some of the others. Did anyone try to say anything while I was talking? No, 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 no. It just means that there'll be fewer classes offered. There'll be, you'll have fewer opportunities to take the classes you want to take. They will close, cancel sections. But yeah, the college is still going to be open. It's just that there'll be, they will have to cancel sections. And uh, I was looking at some of the numbers yesterday and they, they are pretty low. So please get registered.
soon, sooner rather than later. Um, well, it, usually they, if someone needs a class to graduate, they'll manage a way to, to do that. Now, if it's a very low populated class, then they may do something like a, a, um, what they call an independent study. Okay. But if it's one that's a fairly common class, like, uh, most of the math classes, except the really high level math classes, most of the, um, uh, you know, history, sociology, psychology, English, uh, literature and stuff. There's always, always, always plenty of sections of those. It's just there'll be fewer sections. Okay. You'll have fewer sections to pick from, but there will be uh, just about always a class, the, the classes that, especially the high population classes, uh, there'll just be very fewer sections of those. They're not going to cancel them all. They can't. I mean, they, they don't want to. They've got to have students graduating. Okay. Any other questions? It looked like we lost. Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, I'm, my hearing's bad and you have such a soft voice. I'm not sure I followed all that, but let me get Ashford here. He just came in while you were talking. Uh, Ashford, did you apologize? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the, uh, it sounded like you were saying, how do you sign up for virtual advising? Okay, so you've already been advised, so what you want to do now is register, is that it? Okay, wait just a second, Ladarius just came in. I need to get him in as well. Okay, now you said you have met with your advisor so you're okay there but is it just the the part about how to actually register for classes is that it oh you have okay great okay well then you're in good shape if you're registered for spring that's exactly what we want to have happened now the other thing they'll be pushing uh now and later is the fact they really want everyone to pay too because that's going to be the next hurdle because what happened this fall and it's this isn't unique to this fall but it, it really hit us hard this fall um, because we don't get to see which students have paid and which students haven't paid this new banner system I don't know why the state government decided the state ACCS decided that we had to go to this new uh, program. It doesn't show, indicate who is paid and who hasn't. So we were teaching classes with a lot of unpaid students in it. And at some point, then it just kicks all the unpaid students out. And, you know, we didn't even know to advise them, please get paid. You know, I think probably emails and stuff went out. So uh, that's where we took a really big hit. Uh, because we thought we had pretty good enrollment until the system threw a lot of people out. So it's uh, the next step will be after you've registered, be sure you complete the registration by completing your payment. F uh, if you're on uh, FAFSA, if you're on the Pell Grant, if you're on any kind of things, complete that registration by completing the payment. Okay. If you're paying out of pocket, you know, get that done as soon as you can as well. Um, I don't know if that had anything to do with what you're saying, but if you're already registered for spring term, that's fantastic. That is absolutely 
what they want to happen. And you don't have to go and meet with, you know, fight the crowds tomorrow. If you, I mean, next week, if you are already done, fantastic. That's why I say if you can re register today or tomorrow or even over the weekend, you don't have to be during the work day, work week, anytime. If you can get uh, that done before, then you don't have to get in the crowds and risk exposures and all that kind of stuff. Um, but try to get it done. If if you need the help, get on campus, okay? The help will be there ready, willing, and able to, to take care of you. Okay. Were there any other comments that way? All right. I realize when I'm talking, probably y'all can't chime in, so I always ask, are there any questions or other things to bring up? Okay, good. I'm sorry we're taking this much time for class, but it's still really important to do. I'm going to now start my share screen, if I can. Yep, 2.3 is here. And this is going to require me to move some of the taskbars around that interfere with my seeing what's on the PowerPoints. It probably won't interfere with yours, but if I can't read it, I can't teach it, you might say. And at the same time, I think I'll go on and set up the whiteboard because that may be where we're beginning today anyway. And they put their toolbar right in the white space. So I have to move it out of the way. And then we'll be ready to start. Now, you probably only see white space. I see white space covered with other stuff. So I'm moving it to get as much uncovered as possible. Okay. Any other questions, issues, concerns before we get started with pre-calculus algebra today? Sorry, we're off to a late start, but um, your questions and comments have been good. Any questions? All right. Now, I believe where we are is on um, chapter two, polynomial and rational functions. We're in section 2.3 polynomial and synthetic division and right now we're doing what they call long division and in just the very next slide or two we'll get to synthetic division. So uh, here's example three on page 138 um, long division of polynomials. Let's see if I can read it from where it is. Now by the way this one you can also go to larsonprecalculus.com for an interactive version of this type of an example. And uh, by the way, folks, I hope you are using these resources. They're really good resources. That's why I chose to use Larson as the author. It's no different pre-calculus from any other, but he has just all these resources that a lot of books don't have. And it can be sort of confusing then when you throw in things like um, ebooks and uh, web assign and all this other somebody's trying to get in I can't see who it is I think it's to to Mia perhaps for some reason <laughs> students coming into class they block their names so <laughs> I can't see them coming in I don't know who wrote these algorithms but they just are a bit counterproductive I believe that was to Mia coming in is that correct it blocks your name, so I can't tell for sure. I'm going to uh, quickly, if I can quickly, go and check and see if anything else is here. We should be up to 15 students now. And let me make sure that was Tamia that came in. There, nope. Yep, there it is, Tamia Thompson got it. Okay, and what I said, 15 students. Okay, let me make sure I've got 15 marked. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Actually, I've got 16, but I believe that's called J Janae had to pop in and pop back out, so hopefully she'll be back. Okay, now for those who just got here, we're in Chapter 2, Polynomial and Rational Functions, Section 2.3, Polynomial and Synthetic Division, Example 3 on page 138, and this one is one of those that's also at um, LarsonPreCalculus.com, 
Okay, so here's what it says to do, and this is written intentionally in awkward form. It says divide negative 5x squared minus 2 plus 3x plus four, uh, 2x to the fourth plus 4x cubed. By 2x minus 3 plus x squared. Okay, and it says check your result. We'll see if we remember that at the time. Okay, ah, here comes Janae back. Good, I think I've already got her here, so that won't change the numbers any. But all my papers are falling and my pen's falling. Let me make sure I've got Janae marked. Yes, I do. Good deal. I thought I had, but just wanted to make sure. Okay. Now, obviously a messy looking problem. And one of the things that makes it messy is the fact that they don't have anything in descending order of the powers. Okay, somebody has, Ladarius, I think that may be your microphone on, okay? It may be good music for you to study pre-calculus by, but maybe everybody doesn't appreciate it. Okay? Somebody has a microphone on. Is it Ladarius? Okay, th well, we're picking up music in the background. All right. All right. So what do we do with this? Well, we figure out what goes inside and what goes outside the house. The dividend goes inside the house. The divisor goes outside the house. That is the divisor. So less first, but then when we put them where in their place, be sure you put them in descending order of the power. So this div divisor here starts with x squared plus 2x minus 3. Okay, that's outside the house. Okay, what goes inside the house, you also put these in descending order of the powers. Well, the maximum power here is x to the fourth, so that's going to be a 2x to the fourth, followed by a plus 3, I mean plus 4x cubed, followed by the minus 5x squared, followed by the plus 3x, and finally we have the minus 2. Now, if by chance they had put some terms there they hadn't combined, combine like terms before you do this. Most of the time they don't do that to you, but it could happen in real life, you know. So, okay, someone still has a microphone on, I think. I think it may be Ladarius. Ladarius. Ladarius? Ladarius. Do you have your microphone on? You might need to mute. I might need to, well, it's got quieter. Okay, good deal. Well, maybe not. Is it bothering to y'all? I'm going to mute him. I don't know if he's the one with it or not. Okay. Now, must have been it. Where do we begin then? Remember, in long division, you always start from left to right. So you see, if I can get my pen to be still, x squared will go into 2x to the fourth. Well, the coefficient here is 1. 1 will go into 2 twice. That's why I like to put them on top like this. x squared goes into x to the fourth x squared times. That's your division part. Then you multiply. 2x two two squared times x squared is 2x to the fourth. Exactly what we want it to be. Oh, I think I said this, but I, or implied this, so I didn't say it. Look at your exponents. 2, 1, 0. 
four, three, two, one, zero. We haven't skipped any, so we're in good shape. If we had missed a, an exponent, you'd have to put in a zero coefficient for that exponent. Like if this would have been an x to the fifth, then the next term would have been a zero x to the fourth, because you have to account for every power. We're okay though. Okay, so let's get back to our multiplying. 2x squared times x squared is 2x to the fourth. 2x squared times 2x is plus 4x cubed. Now, if you don't remember, you multiply the coefficients and you add your exponents. Okay, we still have another term. 2x squared times a minus 3 would be a minus 6 x squared okay now what you do next subtract and because we're dealing with sign numbers I find it easier to change signs and add so I'm going to change that to a minus I'm going to change this plus to a minus and I'm going to change that minus to a plus now it's easier for me to add and not make mistakes. So these add to zero. Surprisingly, this one adds to zero. This one adds to x squared. Okay. Now we need to bring down the next terms plus three x. But because we wiped out two terms here, we bring down two terms minus two. Okay. Now divide again x squared will go into x squared one time okay and you can put it anywhere you want to I'm gonna put it here plus one then we multiply one times x squared is x squared squared okay one times 2x is plus 2x and one times a minus 3 is a minus 3 and again we subtract and I'm going to change signs and add because that's how I make fewer mistakes. Make that a minus. Make this one a minus and make this one a plus. Okay, then when I go to add, those disappear. Exactly what we want to happen. Add those and you get x and add those you get plus one. Okay, now that is one rendition of your answer. Here's your quotient, 2x squared plus 1. There's your remainder. Now, what do we check? Make sure the remainder is lower degree than your divisor it is. So how's another way we could write this? We could write that quotient plus x plus 1 over your divisor, x squared plus 2x minus 3. Okay, so there's one way you could write that division algorithm. Now they did say um, check the results. How do you do that? Just like you used to in grammar school. Multiply your divisor, your quotient by your divisor. So let's do that. 2 I'm sorry, x squared plus 2x minus 3 multiplied by 2x squared plus 1 plus, and then add your remainder, x plus 1. Okay, so let's do this first. Okay, it's kind of like foiling, only we don't have enough letters, okay? This is x squared times 2x squared is 2x to the fourth. Now, you can do this any way you want to. Here's my favorite way of doing it. I like to do the higher powers. I just make sure you got everything done. That's your x to the fourth. Let's now do the x cubes. That would be these two. That would be plus 4x cubed. Now let's do the squared terms. Well that's a squared term plus x squared 
and here's a squared term plus minus 6x squared okay now what are we missing our x terms the only x term I see is this one and that's a plus 2x and then the constant terms there's the only one I see minus 3 okay now we're going to add to that x plus 1 all right let's see what we get combine all your x fourths we only got 1 2 x to the fourth that's looking good got that one covered plus 4x cubed that's the only one I see there plus 4x cubed there that one is that looks good too okay now we got two x squared terms combine those that's the plus 1 and the minus 6 excuse me <laughs> sneeze was not part of the problem sorry about that these add to be minus 6x squared no minus 5x squared because you have a plus 1 and a minus 6 and there's that minus 5x squared okay the x terms well they got separated here but these two add and those become plus 3x and that checks out up here too and then finally we have our constant terms which is a minus 3 and a plus 1 that would be a minus 2 if I have room to write it let's see if I can get it in here and sure enough there's your minus 2 yep we check the results and they look good to me okay now if my way of multiplying is confusing to you do it any way you want to just make sure you do it right. I'll get confused with uh, powers, but sometimes doing it this way, you miss a power. Uh, but be very careful however you do it. Do your multiplication. Make sure you get the, where, where, there it is. This term multiplied by both of those terms, and there they are. Here's by this one and that one. Make sure this term gets multiplied by both of those terms. There they are. Make sure this term gets multiplied by both of those terms, and there they are. As long as you have every term being multiplied by every other term, you're fine. Just don't do them twice, and don't skip any. Okay. And then add your remainder, however you find that to do. Any questions on that? Okay. That was example three. Now, what we're going to do next is synthetic division, which is shorter, easier, doesn't take as much room, isn't as confusing perhaps, okay? However, it has limitations. This problem we just did, you could not use at all synthetic division. And here's why. Look at your divisor. If I can get my pen to show up, there it is. The, this divisor has x squared terms in it doesn't work does not work here it is here x squared cannot use synthetic division if you have any power greater than one in this one it does so what we're about to do this problem we'd still have to do long division no matter how nice and pretty and everything else concise synthetic division is sometimes you just can't use it so let's go back to 2.3 and we'll go from current slide and this was that thing we were just talking about last time division write the div dividend and the divisor and descending powers of the variable which we did in that last problem we just did and if we had any missing powers we insert those powers with zero coefficients we checked we had no missing powers the previous example remember the x cubed minus 1 divided by x minus 1 there we had two missing powers so we had the 0x squared and 0x so that's we had already done that now we move to synthetic division 
Now, like we said, synthetic division is easier, simpler, uh, a lot better to, to do if you can do it, but you can't always do it. There's a nice shortcut to long, for long division of polynomials when you have your divisors in this form, x minus k, where k is any, really any real number in the world. Most of the time we're going to have them as integers, but it could be any real number in the world. Uh, this shortcut is called synthetic division. Here's what I like to say. It helps me see it better. The coefficient of that leading term has to be a 1. The exponent of the leading term has to be a 1. That's how I check. If that had a coefficient of 2x minus k, you cannot do synthetic division. If it was x squared minus k, you cannot do synthetic division. It has to be a coefficient of 1 and an exponent of 1. If that's the case, you can always do synthetic division. So the pattern for synthetic division of a cubic polynomial this is a cubic one, is summarized as follows. Now, if you think about it, a cubic polynomial, maximum power of three, you're going to have four terms because you have one term with a constant, one with the first power, one with the second power, and one with the third power. That's four terms. Now, even if you don't have all four terms, you're going to have to put a zero in there anyway. So this is why they say this is a pattern for a cubic polynomial. The pattern for higher degree polynomials is similar. You just have more terms up there. Here's what you do. Notice here the form is x minus k. So what we do to divide a cubic polynomial, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d by x minus k, that's the form we have to have, coefficient of 1, exponent of 1, Here's the pattern, okay? Now, whatever this k was, that's x minus k here, you just put k on the outside. Not minus k, but k. Remember, whatever you're doing with the x's, you usually have to change the sign. So you put that there. Now, here's why you change signs. Remember, once you multiply, you change signs and add. So that's what we're doing here. We're just... We're leaving out the x terms, basically, and just using the numerical part, the a, b, c, and d, and the k, okay? So put the k on the outside of the house here. I don't draw my house the same way they do, but we'll, we'll get there in a minute. And just put the coefficients inside the house, a, b, c, and d. Now, if any of these terms are missing, that means those terms are zeros here, okay? Now, once you have that, here's my little rule. The books never say this, but here's my rule. Skip a line and draw a line. That says horizontal line down here. There's a line we skipped. Oh, here comes Weston. Let me get Weston here. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to set my pen aside because when I've got this in my lap, I can't do it. Okay. Well, my pen decided to quit writing. The pen didn't want Weston. No, I'm just kidding here. He, of course it did. Okay. There's Weston. Okay, catching that ball again. I hope you caught it anyway. Okay. Um, and here's what you do. Synthetic division is what we're talking about. You put the number that is follows the minus sign. Now, if that's a plus sign, you put a negative number here. Okay. So you always do what's opposite here. Put the coefficients here. Notice we've left out x's all together. Skip a line, draw a line, horizontal line down here. Bring down that first a. Okay? And then what you do is multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. k times a is ka. Then whatever, and these are just numbers. Remember, there's no variables here. They're just numbers. Then you add b plus ka. That gives you a number down here. Then you multiply k times b times k, a, and that gives you a number you write here. Then you add these two numbers, write it here. Multiply these two numbers, write it there. Multiply and, and then add these two numbers, write it here. Now, once you get there, that last number is always your remainder. 
Now, it may be zero, so you may have zero remainder. That's good. That's a, a fine remainder to have. What these are, the first three numbers for a cubic case, these are going to be your coefficients of your quadratic. Because every time you divide an x into an x cubed, my internet connection is unstable, so I'm going to quit talking math for a while. Was I breaking up some there? Can you hear me now? Okay. All right. Good. Sorry, I don't know why. Last time I checked, I had five bars, so I don't know why the internet connection is unstable. It is sort of rainy outside. Maybe that's messing with things. Okay. So, what these numbers down here represent are the coefficients of now your quadratic quotient. You know, this is your quotient because that started out cubic. When you divide an x into an x cubed, you get an x squared. So that's the coefficient for your x squared terms, your x term, and your constant term. And there's your remainder. Okay? So what do we have here? Your vertical pattern, your adding, your diagonal patterns, your multiplying. Okay. Now, this box, this letters, all well and good. It's so much easier to follow if you're doing numbers. Okay, so let's do the numbers. But before we do, they're going to drag this out a little bit longer. So that algorithm for synthetic division works only for divisors. They've said this before. They're saying it now. Whose coefficient is 1, for those who just got in here, the coefficient of 1, the exponent of 1. For your x term, coefficient has to be 1, exponent 1. Now, and they also say this. This is the standard form, but if you had an x plus k, then that's x minus a minus k. The, what goes outside the house would be a negative number. If what's this is a negative here, what goes outside of the house is positive. If this is a positive here, what goes outside the house is the negative for that. Okay, remember everything dealing with x's are usually backwards. Okay, now here's example four. Okay, I thought we were going to do some more, but this is good. Use synthetic division to divide this big old hairy looking polynomial here by this one. Number one, can we use synthetic division? Coefficient of 1, exponent of 1. Yes, we can. Now, here's how I do mine. If you like the way the book does it, do, your, do it that way. Notice here, this is x plus 3. What we put outside the house is a minus 3. Always do that for synthetic division. That way, you don't have to change signs and add. They're already changed for you. Okay, then what do we do next? Put the coefficients inside the house okay now notice here four two one zero we're missing an x cubed term we've got to include the x cubed term so we put a coefficient of zero so the coefficient here is one zero minus ten keep the sign with it minus two keep the sign with it and plus four you don't have to write down the pluses if you don't want to. Now, I'm going to tell you a little secret here. Not a secret. It's how I do it. Once I have those coefficients written down, I go back to my original problem. What's the maximum exponent? Four. How many numbers do we have here? Five. You've got to have one more number here than your maximum coefficient there. If you don't, you've left out a zero somewhere or you skipped a number somewhere. You've got to have one more. Okay? So once that's been checked, then you do my little rule, skip a line, draw a line, horizontal line. What do you do next? Bring down the one. And from this point on, all you do is multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. That's all there is to it. So multiply minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. Add 0 plus minus 3 is minus 3. Notice you don't have to change signs. You don't. Have, you change signs right up here to begin with. Made that from a plus 3, if I could get my pen to show up, to a minus 3 here. So that's all you do. So next, multiply. Minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9. 
add. Minus 10 plus 9 is minus 1. Multiply. Minus 3 times minus 1 plus 3. Add. Negative 2 plus 3, 1. Multiply. Minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. Add. 4 minus 3 is 1. Separate that one off. Oh, here comes Ladarius. I didn't know he had left. So, um, I'm sure I've got him marked, but let me make sure of that. Okay, got it. All right, welcome back. Okay, now, huh, that leaves us a bunch of numbers. What do those numbers mean? Well, here's what they mean. This one started off as a fourth degree polynomial, so your quotient is a third degree polynomial. So this means this is going to be x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 1. There's your quotient. This is your remainder. Plus 1 over your divisor, which is a x plus 3. There's your answer. Now, if you want to put these in parentheses, you could. If that helps you see it better, that's fine. Okay? There is your answer. Okay? Now, let's just make sure the book got it right. I uh, believe they did x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 1 plus 1 over x minus plus 3 looks like they got it right good for them so what I'm going to do is erase my screen and let's see how they did it now it says you should set up the array as follows note that a 0 for the missing x cubed term has to go in for the x cubed term. So what you do first is put the opposite of this outside the house. Now they don't do the little block like I do. They do a long line. Fine, I don't care how you do it. Okay. Inside the house, they put your coefficients. But be sure you have them in descending order of the power. 4, missing a 3, 2, 1, 0. So this is the coefficient for your x to the 4th. The missing coefficient for x cubed. Okay, Ladarius, I think you got your phone on again, your uh, speaker on again. Okay, then minus 10x squared uh, plus minus 2x and plus 4 here. I go back and count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 has to be one more than your maximum coefficient. If you don't, you're missing something, okay? If you got two more than that, you've got something extra in there, okay? So be sure you got that. Then, oh, here comes Chance. Let me get him in. And, okay. Got it. Chance is here. So we should be up to 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We should have 18 students now. Let me make sure I've got everybody accounted for. Yep, nine, I'm the 19th. Okay, so we're good. Okay, now they've set it up properly. The minus 3 on the outside, uh, chance we're doing synthetic division. Hopefully you've had this before, but if not, go back and listen and read in the book and see. You put the opposite of this number here outside the house, then you put your coefficients for the dividend here, but you have to account for every term, and this is an x to the fourth. You're missing your x cubed, so you have to put a zero there. The one goes with the x to the fourth, a zero for the x cubed, minus 10 for the x squared, minus two for the x, and plus four for the constant, okay? So you set it up this way, skip a line, draw a line. That's my little rule. The books never say that. Bring down the 1. Then we do our multiply diagonally. Minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. Add vertically. That's a minus 3. 0 minus 3 is that. Multiply again. Plus 9. Add this way. 
you get a minus 1. Multiply this way, you get a th plus 3. Add this way, you get a plus 1. Multiply this way, you get a minus 3. And add this way, and you get a plus 1. I always separate this one out. Okay? Why? Because these are the coefficients of your quotient. Always one degree less than your uh, dividend. Why? Because remember the exponent here had to be a 1. Okay? Coefficient had to be a 1. Okay? Um, so that makes this x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 1 and then your remainder is plus 1 over your divisor x plus 3. There's my answer. Let's see what they get. And they show everything I just did. Your divisor, which was the minus 3, uh, multiplied by the 1 you brought down, and that minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. 0 minus 3 is minus 3. Minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9. Negative 10 plus 9 is minus 1. Negative 3 times uh, uh, negative 1 is plus 3. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. And negative 3 times plus 1 is minus 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. That's your remainder. Now they just write it here. I separate it. You know, so you can see that is indeed separate. So these are the coefficients of your quotient. Always one degree less than your dividend. This was x to the fourth, so this is x cubed. Minus 3x squared minus x plus 1. What do you do with that remainder? Put it over your divisor. Plus 1 over in your divisor was x plus 3. I'm sure they're going to do that next. And there they do it. Okay. Uh, and they write it in this form that original polynomial di dividend divided by the divisor is equal to your quotient here that's where you write your quotient plus your remainder over your divisor okay make sense All right. so let's move on to that was equation four in every example is followed by a checkpoint okay checkpoint is at the bottom of page 139 for that one please do your checkpoints as a good uh, reinforcing of what we just did okay now we're moving now to what they call the remainder and the factor theorems these are very useful really surprisingly handy theorems okay the remainder obtained from the synthetic division process has an important and this is only for synthetic division remember synthetic division process has an important interpretation as described here in the remainder theorem okay and that is this if a polynomial f of x that we've been calling the dividend is divided by your form uh, coefficient 1 exponent of 1 x minus k then that remainder is always f of k. What? How can that be? Let's go back and check and see if that is indeed true. Okay? What we had here, remember your k here, remember our divisor was x, I can't get my pen, there it is, x plus 3 so um, that's x minus a minus 3. So what it says here, if we have put an x equal minus 3 into this function right here, we would get that as an answer. Could that be? Let's see. That would be a minus 1 raised to the fourth power minus 10 times a minus 1 raised to the second power minus 2 times a minus 1 plus 4 what would that equal? Well this will be 
a negative number raised to an even power is always positive. And 1 is really simple. That would be a plus 1. Now, a negative number raised to an even power is positive, but that would be a positive 1 times a minus 10. That would be minus 10. Okay? Minus 2 times minus 1 would be a plus 2, and then we have a plus 4. Let's add those up. Wait a minute. I'm supposed to be putting an x equal, sorry, x equal minus 3. Where is my brain today? Sorry about this, folks. I said, this isn't working. Okay. That's because I wrote it wrong. This is a minus 3 here. That'll be a minus 3 there, a minus 3 there, a minus 3 there. And we've got a lot more work to do. Okay. Sorry about that. I said, this isn't working. Okay. Let me get the pen back. The old gray cells ain't what they used to be. Okay. So x is equal to minus 3. And we plug that into this dividend. So that would be a minus 3 to the 4th minus 10 times uh, minus 3 squared minus 2 times a minus 3 plus 4. All right. Whoa. Some pretty big numbers here. Minus 3 to the 4th power. Minus 3 squared is positive 9 and then square that again you get 81 my word this looks terrible doesn't it 81 minus okay this is your 9 negative 3 squared is positive 9 times a negative 10 would be a minus 90 okay then you have a plus 6 and a plus 4 Okay, combine those. Um, this is a 81 plus 10 would be 91 minus 90. Sure enough, that's positive 1. And that's what your remainder is. Wow! Okay, now let me ask you something. Which of these was easier to do? That synthetic division was just adding and multiplying, adding and multiplying, adding and multiplying. This, you have to raise the big powers, you know, and then your things that you're adding and you're subtracting, big numbers, most of the time, not always, but most of the time, way easier to evaluate a, um, a large polynomial by a single number, you know, at a single value, is to do synthetic division. So here's a bonus for synthetic division, and that's exactly what it says here. If you polynomial f of x is divided by x minus k, our example was x plus 3, so our minus k was a minus 3, then the remainder is f of minus 3. When we plugged in a minus 3 into that big old polynomial, we got a plus 1 as the answer. The remainder theorem tells you that the synthetic division can be used to evaluate a polynomial function, sometimes it's easier than just plugging it in. See, before this, the only way we had to evaluate it, plug it in, plug it in. Now we found sometimes an easier way to do synthetic division. That is to evaluate a polynomial function, f of x, when x equal k, divide the polynomial function using synthetic division by x minus k. In other words, put on the outside k, and then do your coefficients. The remainder will be f of k, and we're going to do example 5. How are we doing on time? Yeah, we got time. So use the remainder theorem to evaluate f of x equal this thing when x equal minus 2. Okay? Now, when x equal minus 2, that means what you put on the outside is the minus 2. If this was written as x plus 2, you'd have put the minus 2 out there. Let's do the same thing here. So put the minus 2 outside the house, okay? Inside the house, put your coefficients. In this case, 3, 8, 5, and 7, okay? Hold a moment, count 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers here, and your maximum exponent is 3. You got enough, 
okay they're in the right order everything's fine skip a line draw a line okay now bring down the three multiply negative two times three negative six add positive two multiply negative four add positive one multiply minus two add five one of those easy operations just multiplying and adding that's all you're doing there's your remainder now our contention is from this that f of negative two is equal to five that's what the remainder theorem tells us let's check it and see f of negative two would be three times a negative two cubed plus eight times a negative two squared plus five times a negative two minus seven. Let's see what that comes up to. Three times negative two cubed. Negative two cubed is negative eight, so this will be three times a negative eight plus eight times negative two squared would be positive four minus 10 minus seven. Okay. I'm running out of room at the bottom, so I'm gonna come up here and do it. Minus 24 plus 32 minus 10 minus seven. Okay. Well, minus 24 minus 10 would be minus 34, plus 32 would be minus two. Have I done this wrong again? I can't believe this is coming out so poorly. Um, I mean, Today is not a very good day, is it? No, it's a minus nine. How did I mess that up? Well, it may have helped if I had put the right sign here. Y'all are letting me get away with this, and you shouldn't be. Right here, that's a minus seven. Okay, it won't work if you don't use the right numbers. That's a minus seven. So everything was fine up to here, and minus seven minus two is minus nine. So I've got to come down here. How in the world y'all let me get away with that? Okay. Yuck. Okay. I'm trying to get my pen to op cooperate here. So this is a minus nine is your remainder. Okay. And when you do your math here, then you get this should be negative 9. Let's do it here. Negative 24 minus 10 would be minus 34, plus 32 would be minus 2, minus 7 is minus 9. Now, if you just write the problem right, this was way easier to do than all of this. Okay? Sometimes it may not be, but most of the time it is. And most of the time, if you write your numbers right, you're going to get the right answers. Okay? Uh, don't know why that minus 7 became a plus 7, but it did. All right. So there's using the remainder theorem. That was example 5. Let me clear this out of the way so you can see how they do it. And that is using synthetic division, putting the minus 2 outside the house. Now, if that was written as x plus 2, then you put the opposite here. If it's written as x equal minus 2, you put the same number there. Because when you move across the equal sign, you change the sign. That would become x plus 2 equals 0, or x plus 2. So, it's a little, little bit of a different rule, but it's the same rule. Okay, So, that's a minus 2 here. Write down your coefficients, 3, 8, 5, minus 7, okay, and then skip a line, draw a line, bring down the 3, multiply negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, add 
8 minus 6 is 2. Multiply negative 2 times 4 times 2 is negative 4. Add 5 minus 4 is 1. Multiply negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Add negative 7 minus 2 is negative 9. Separate that off. That should be your answer. And we know it is because we've just done it. Because the remainder is negative 9, you can conclude that f of minus 2 is equal to minus 9. And those were easy, easy operations to do. If you just write the numbers down right, you got the right answer. Okay, that means that negative 2, negative 9 is a point on the graph of f. You can check this by substituting negative 2, x equal negative 2 in the original function. Here they do it. f of negative 2 is equal to 3 times negative 2 cubed plus 8 times negative 2 squared minus, or plus 5 times negative 2 minus 7. Minus 7. Okay, and when you do that, that's 3 times a negative 8 plus two times, 8 times a positive 4, minus 10, minus 7. And when you combine like terms there, or multiply and you get negative 24 plus 32, minus 10, minus 7. Now combine like terms, and you get minus 9. Okay? Done. Any questions? All right. Now, about five minutes let's see if we can get the factor theorem done another important theorem is the factor theorem which is stated below a polynomial f of x that's where we started before in the remainder theorem has a factor of x minus k if and only if f of k is equal to zero okay now in other words what we were just saying before the remainder theorem was if you put x equal k and do synthetic division, you will get f of k equals zero. I mean, equal your 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 function. Well, if this is a factor and you put in the k there, that means your remainder is zero. It's got to be because the factor will go into it exact number of times with no remainder. So using the factor theorem, you can test whether a polynomial x minus k is a factor as a factor by evaluating the, the polynomial at x equal k. Whatever this is, change the sign here. If the result is a 0, x minus k is a factor. And now you factored your polynomial. So not only does uh, this help you... Um, the remainder theorem helps you evaluate a polynomial function. The factor theorem helps you factor a polynomial function. Okay, so here's example six, and this is on your page 141. Okay, and I forgot to tell you before, the following example five was a checkpoint. Please do your checkpoints. Okay, so let's do example six. Show the x minus two and x plus 3 are factors of that polynomial function. Yes. I yeah, know we go till 945 though, right? Okay. Let me try to get as much of this done as possible. Synthetic division is pretty easy. Okay. What we put outside the house, let's see. You're right. We probably won't get it finished anyway. So let's just pick up there for next time. And this will allow me plenty of time to give you homework exercises, which Janae was wanting those homework exercises. She wanted to make sure I didn't forget to give them, right? So thank you for stopping me. Okay, good, good deal here. Okay. We almost finished this section. Okay. Almost finished. Homework exercises here would include seven. That should be at calcchat.com. Nine should be at calcchat.com. Uh, any of the odds 11 through 23 should be at calcchat.com. 19 should be at calcview.com. Any of the odds 25 through 43 should be at calcchat. 27 should be at calcview. Any of the odds 45 to 49 should be at calcchat. Um, any of the either 51 or 53 should be at calcchat with 51 at calc view. 
uh, and hold off and we'll do the factor theorem after the next time. Now, well, well, probably I'm awfully close now. I've got two more minutes to go. So let me, let's talk about how this is going to play out. Okay. Next week, we will finish, knock on wood, we'll finish 2.3. As soon as we finish 2.3, I'll give you the third test. I'll post the third test. Now, if some of you want to go on and get started on that now, I can post it today. Maybe late tonight, but sometime today or tomorrow. Do you want me to go on and post that so you can work on it this weekend? Yes or no? Anybody? Yes? Okay. I'll go on and uh, post the third test. And it only covers 2-1 to 2-3. And then we'll finish 2-3. We only got one more example in that to do. Finish that on Tuesday. And then that's when the clock starts for you to, to be get that test done. It's a pretty short test. It used to be a quiz. In fact, it'll say quiz two. It, it, it's now a test, OK? One page, something like 10 questions, OK? Now, that's, I'll try to do that today or tomorrow. I may not have time tonight. My class last class today goes till 7.45 this evening, so I may not have a chance to get it posted this evening, but I'll try to get it posted tomorrow. OK, that will give you the weekend to start working on it. OK, then we'll continue next week with 2.4, which is not going to take us long to do, 2.5, and then 2.6. When we finish those, that will be your test. Now that's probably going to be the week after Thanksgiving, okay? Which means we're right at the end of the term, okay? And then sometime after that, I'll give you your final exam. I'll try to make that short so it won't be take you as long to do. And when you I do that, then get that in to me anytime during finals week. Does that make sense? Yeah, it'll be test number three. Test number one was 1.4 to 1.6. No, 1.4 to 1. Point, no. Yeah, 1.4 to 1.6. Test two was 1.4 to 1.9. Test three will be this one, 2.1 to 2.3. And then the fourth test, if we can squeeze that in, will be 2.1 to 2.6. And then the final week. OK, I usually post them on Blackboard. If they allow a place for me to do it, it'll be under whatever week it is. Like this will be week, what is it? Week 13, I believe it is. Week 13, uh, what now says week 13 assessment will say test three. If I can't post it there, I'll post it on Blackboard message. Not email, but messages. It's like an email, but it's all within Blackboard. All right, glad to. Any other questions? Great questions, by the way. OK, thank you. You all do too. I forgot this is since we had day off yesterday. I almost felt like the day was a, a Tuesday, but it's not. Have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. The counts are rising like crazy. I say this every week, but they are. Please be careful. Be safe. All right. Any other questions? I'm going to stop sharing for now. And unless there's some other questions, I'm going to end the meeting for everybody. Any questions? All right. Then we'll see you on Tuesday, right? Good deal. Thanks. Be safe.